Howdy folks, it's RJ Helms here, playing some Factorio, but doing something a little bit different. Rather than keeping up with the Let's Play for today, I'm going to do a bit of a tutorial about how I set up my oil refining areas. There's some discussion on the Factorio subreddit about, um, there's a video posted about calculating the most efficient way to have your, um, your oil processing set up, uh, which is great for calculating kind of exactly what you're going to need to play the game to completion. Um, but... It's a bit, it was a little bit complicated, and there's some discussion about how it's not really necessary if you just use kind of a circuit-controlled uh, cracking setup to ensure that basically all your goods are turning into um, the oil products that you're going to use in your factory um, and dealing with any excess that you're producing. Um, and it's able to kind of respond to the, um, the specifics of how your, um, your production might not match that ratio exactly. Um, that's something that I use in most of my games, so I thought I'd do a little tutorial showing how I set it up. This uh, map that I'm playing on is just a previous game that I'd played to completion. You can see that the rocket is has been launched, just one. But it's got, you know, all the resources I need and a fair deal of empty space here that should be more than enough to build things, so it was just a jumping off point. So kind of from the rest of my factory, I'm bringing in crude oil and water. I have my rest of my oil refining turned off. So this is all just pumping up to here. Um, there's some storage tanks for oil lower down, but the actual oil refiner going into my existing factory is turned off just to make sure I have lots of supply. So the first thing that you need to build, of course, is your refineries. Um, this is pretty straightforward to do, of course. Um, I'm gonna put down three for now. That's, of course, you can extend this. Um, that's kind of the beauty of this setup, as long as you leave yourself enough space, it is infinitely extendable. Um, but I find that three is kind of the minimum to make everything fit. You're, the size of this build kind of in the dimension it's going, you know, east-west in this case, is about three refineries tall. So of course you have to be using um, advanced oil processing, you don't have to for the refineries, but to do cracking you have to have it unlocked, so there is no reason to do anything different. And then just hook these up. Um, this technique of just having one come out here, and one come out one tile, and coming out two to be able to um, pass the pipe to grounds under each other like this is a great basic technique if you're not familiar with it. It's used pretty extensively in this build. And then do the same thing on this side. Heavy oil, light oil, petroleum, gas. Oh, and that was wrong. So there's a, a bunch of different strategies out there for what you do um, with your products and kind of what is meaningful to take down to your factory if you're using a main bus system or any other way. Um, what I like to do is turn heavy oil into lubricant and kind of buffer a small amount of that and bring it down to the, um, that onto the bus and then just bring petroleum gas. So, um, some of my heavy oil goes to lubricant, the rest of it gets cracked into light oil and then all of the light oil gets cracked into petroleum gas. And if I need solid fuel anywhere, um, particularly in the case for launching rockets, I do just kind of on site, um, turn petroleum gas into the uh, into the solid fuel and then into the rocket fuel. Some people will argue that using light oil for the um, for your solid fuel source is a bit more efficient. That's probably true. But I just find having the um, only the one kind of type of fuel being bust makes things a lot simpler. And for that reason, what my factories tend to have happen is I think like a lot of people, I just pile up on light oil. That's the one that more than anything else I end up with a surplus of. And eventually, if I don't pay attention, my oil refining operation just kind of stops dead because of a surplus of light oil. So I'm just going to set up here storage tanks for each of these things. Um, because I'm not planning on storing large amounts of Oh, that's backwards. To make sure it's consistent. Um, oh no, I was off by one. You're kind of thinking about this, you know, as I 
it is kind of my standard build to have four tanks of each. But because I'm not really intending to store any um, light oil or heavy oil, like these can hold 10,000 of each, and I don't really want 10,000 light oil, I have no use for it. I could probably get away with having just one or two tanks of everything except for the petroleum gas, but it really doesn't matter, which I'll see, show you why in a moment. Um, so these are going to start feeding in. I can hold up to 10,000 of each, like I said. I'm going to bring some power poles over here to get these things on the circuit network. So just using one color circuits, doesn't matter which. I'm going to bring these all onto the circuit network like so. And then I can see here at a glance that on the circuit network there's signals for my petroleum gas, light oil, and heavy oil. So yeah, like I say, what's going to happen here, I mean, I'll set it up for the sake of example. I mean, just the simplest way to do it is just to have your lubricant right here and get that guy going. And this would go into another tank. Um, but I'm not going to use lubricant nearly as much as I'm probably producing heavy oil, so this would still fill up. So, I mean, I would have another tank here, but I just always want to have lubricant, so I don't need any sort of flow control here. But now what I need to do is have a way to crack the heavy oil into light oil and the light oil into uh, petroleum gas. And still make sure that I've got um, just the right amount on that, so this doesn't run out, so I kind of prioritize keeping some, and just be able to kind of control exactly what I want to do with the circuit network. So let's set up our cracking columns. So build these a ways away, but just kind of right off this outlet here, um, I'm going to build my cracking column. So I have one here, and one there. Just start with the, the two. So this will be heavy oil into light oil, and this will be light oil into petroleum gas. Just can pull back to there. And this, I'll just connect up. They can all connect up to the water. You can actually connect up quite nicely here. I've actually made a mistake. So this is, um, we'll get this started anyways just to demonstrate it. And then in turn, this can come back. So this heavy oil cracking feeds into my light oil tank. And the light oil cracking feeds into the petroleum tank, petroleum gas tank. So let's get these guys both started. And so this is working fine. I can see that it's cracking. But the problem is that I have no control over maintaining a... Um, an inventory. So if I, so for example, since I'm going to be having some, I mean, not that it's actually happening here because I've got this kind of stopped, but I do want to make sure I always have lubricant. So I actually want to prioritize the production of lubricant over the, um, the production, this cracking. Or in other words, have a minimum reserve of heavy oil so I always can produce some lubricant. Uh, some people in their builds like to use um, light oil to produce solid fuel, either for their factory in general or for um, creating the rocket fuel for launching their rockets. In that case, they want to make sure that they had some inventory of the um, of light oil. I don't do that. Um, I will just bust the petroleum gas down, even though it's kind of less efficient, I think, when you work at all the ratios. Um, but I will kind of on location make my solid fuel and rocket fuel from petroleum gas. So really what I want to do is have all of my... Um, all of my fuel, apart from some reserve I'm keeping for heavy oil, be turned into petroleum gas. So to control these things, what you do is um, it's just the same idea, but rather than hooking up this directly up, put a pump in place. Oh, that pump's in the wrong place, of course, because it has to go here. 
And then if I power these up... Well, that didn't accomplish very much. Now it's just going to be pumping out these things. But what I can do with this is then I can control pumps from the circuit network. So if I connect this guy up to here, and this guy up to here, now I can set specific amounts. So I'm going to move these guys over one. You'll see why in just a moment. So I can say here, for example, I want to only crack light oil when I've got more than a certain amount of heavy oil. Let's say 500 is plenty. So now since my circuit network is showing that I've only got 25 heavy oil, this is not going to be flowing. And so I mean, what's here is what's already in the pipe is going to be um, is going to be getting cracked. But I'll always have well, anytime the supply dips below 500, I will stop cracking this and let it build up the reserve to maintain 500, so that I could, for example, be producing lubricant. I can do the same thing here. I can say for light oil, I want let's say also 500 for the sake of argument because I do have over 500 light oil this cracking column is still being fed whereas this one now you can see it's starved it's it stopped producing but this one is going to still be fed because I've got the surplus of light oil meaning that I will, you know as long, until it drops below 500 it's going to keep doing that cracking, and I can set these arbitrarily. So, for example, let's say I want to make sure, I mean, I could just not care. I could not want to keep any heavy oil or any light oil, but I could want to maintain a thousand heavy oil. And that would work just as well. If I decide that I don't care about keeping heavy oil, I can set this down to zero. And then this is going to kick into action. One thing I have to do, which is why I put the space here, is I like to just be able to see at a glance what is going. So I do put lights on and set them to the same condition using the circuit network. So for example, if this is set to heavy oil greater than zero, this can be set to heavy oil greater than zero. If this is set to light oil greater than zero, this can be set to light oil greater than zero. We must start doing it kind of right at the cusp. So say this is set Let's say I want to make sure to keep a thousand light oil. It's kind of interesting because you can just see at a glance which of your cracking columns are working. And also one of the, the things like I mentioned with this is that it makes it so good is that it's infinitely extendable for as long as you have space. So let's say, for example, I found kind of as time was going on that my cracking columns weren't quite big enough. And this is something that happens in my builds pretty much constantly is, I mean, heavy oil is not an issue. One or two um, chemical plants cracking it really kind of deals with what you have. Um, I mean, I think in my current game that I'm playing, not my... Uh, my let's play, but another one. I've got 12 oil refiners going, and I think I'm still managing with one lubricant um, producing plant and um, two chemical plants doing cracking with some modules in them, but all the same, nothing too crazy. But I've got easily 15 or 16 doing light oil because, like I say, I, I mean, once these tanks fill up and I've got 10,000 light oil in my system, The refiners it would just stop and that's why this is so important to keep this from happening so i can just pull this up the same way And yeah, these guys are also go are all going. Actually, I'm still 
cool. So what I want is still building up an inventory of my uh, my heavy oil or my light oil. So let's set this condition to just something kind of right on the cusp. So I'll say 10, just so you can see what that kind of looks like. So it's turned off because I don't have 10. I've only got eight. But see, so that's what you tend to see when you actually got your ratios working just right. That's why I like to have these lights here. You see every single time a factory outputs, this just blinks on for just a moment um, as the surplus above your ratio or above your limit goes into the Kraken column. I actually can axe this guy. Let's see if we can get this, um... This has happened on the other one as well. That's where they went. Do the exact same sort of setup here. Looks like my amount of uh, light oil is still going up. So I would actually, even in the setup, just for these um, for these three, I could probably even want more. I mean, because that's when this is when you know that you found your sweet spot. When it is just flickering like this, kind of consistently, um, it means that you are, you know, just about maintaining exactly the amount that you've decided that you have in reserve. If you've got the light set, if the light is always off, it means that you're um, you're drawing too much, and you're not um, you're drawing too much from non-cracking sources, and you're not maintaining enough production, or nothing's being output. But that's fine. Um, and if it's always on, it means that you probably, that your inventory is building up and you need more cracking there. Um, like is the case here, it seems like it's still building up. Um, obviously for the heavy oil, for example, since I've got lubricant demands might change over time, they might fluctuate based on my production of, uh, blue belts and, um, of electric engines, it'd be okay to see, um, this kind of flickering off and then coming back on later. So once again, what I would typically do is maybe 500 on the heavy oil. And then on the light oil, I typically do set it to 500 or 250, but it could realistically be set to just zero. Um, I just like to have that insurance policy for having a little bit there, um, just in case I were to change my mind later. Um, so let's just go over. I'm going to hook back up my real factory, but just to wrap this up, I'll show you kind of how this looks in practice. At my existing builds. So this was a little bit messier because it was built kind of subject to the... Um, the realities of the space that I had, but let's get this hooked back up. I think this is how I just stopped it. Yeah. And this guy gets hooked up there. So here I've actually got my ratio set. He has a 250 oil, uh, light oil, and 500 heavy oil. Just like I said, so you can see here, this is kind of exactly what it looks like in practice. Um, this is a bit messy because this kind of grew over time, but I've got two, um, how many do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got seven oil refineries all going full tilt. I've got just two heavy oil, um, to light oil cracking things. And I've got, I think this is also seven, even more, four, no, that's eight, um, light oil to, to, to two petroleum gas cracking columns. Both with two speed module ones in. I probably wouldn't do that now. Um, efficiency modules is really the better way to go um, for any sort of oil cracking if you're going to get modules involved. Um, because you can always build more. 
But this was a little sloppy because I didn't really plan out to have the space for it, so it kind of has to jog with the terrain. But you can see here, these are kicking on kind of as refineries spit things out. And if I look at my production, um, you know, no matter what happens, no matter how much oil is produced or not produced, these are going to always sit um, just around the amounts that I specified. And that way, um, you know, if I see them going over, it means I need more cracking. If I see them going under, that means I'm drawing them from somewhere else. The light oil is never going to go under. The heavy oil goes under. It means that I need more lubricant production. Oh, but that's just a way to use um, the circuit network to control your cracking of the um, oil bribe products you're not using um, to kind of shunt them down the production chain into the ones that you actually do want. Um, and it's just a kind of a simple technique to uh, manage your oil production, make sure you're not bogging down and that your ratios of what you actually have in production matches the ratios of what you need in your factory without having to um, do too much kind of arithmetic in your head to plan things out. And it also leaves you a lot of flexibility because if you give yourself enough space, um, not like I did here, um, you can just keep this extending infinitely far um, if you leave enough space that you've got room to build it out linearly just along one axis um, it can go forever um, pretty much um, and that way you can kind of always feed it off more refineries and you can always make sure that no matter how many refineries you have running um, you're not actually going to be having your production stop or shut down by um, having byproducts that you don't want just sitting and, and clogging up the tanks so um Hope you found that helpful. If you do have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll try to answer them. And if you have any thoughts for other tutorial things you might want to top, uh, cover, I mean, I'm no no Factorio superstar, but I have learned a thing or two from, from playing it for more hours than I want to count. Um, so I'd be happy to, to see if I can answer them um, or shed some light on the areas. Um, and since this is kind of a new thing, let me know if you have any, any thoughts about this format or, or the idea of doing tutorials on this channel at all. I'd love to hear it, whether it's you like it, you don't like it, it all works for me. Uh, and as always, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more things like this in the future. And I'll see you next time. Thanks so much.